In vitro fertilization allows manual fertilization and monitoring of an egg outside of the body in order to ensure fertilization and growth of an embryo. This gives women who have passed menopause, same-sex partners, and women who simply cannot conceive naturally the chance to procreate. Despite its expense, about $12,500 per procedure, this technique is becoming more successful. Major ethical issues surround the entire process of in vitro fertilization. These include issues surrounding what to do with leftover embryos, cloning, and simply having too many children from a single impregnation. Although the process has improved, it still isn't perfect. The process begins when the women start taking hormones that cause their egg cells to mature, allowing the doctor to harvest them. These eggs are then fertilized by the desired father's or donor's sperm in a petri dish. They are then implanted into the woman's uterus two to three at a time until a child is conceived. One potential complication is what should happen should these embryos all survive, especially if more than a couple embryos are implanted in the woman's womb. This has been a popular current issue due to the recent publicity of Nadia Solomon, also known as the Optimum. Nadia Solomon, a single mother who lives with her parents, conceived all 14 of her children through in vitro fertilization. She already had six children to take care of before she decided to have more. Her doctor implanted her remaining six embryos, one of which split and created twins. Eight babies is trouble, oftentimes harming the health of the mom and sometimes harming the health of the fetuses. Kaiser Permanente Hospital says the infants are doing well. The cost of their hospital care is expected to run into the millions. Every one of us at some point is going to be asked to pay, either in insurance premiums, social programs, uh, subsidizing uh, medical costs that individuals can't bear. Dr. Jamie Griffo calls this mega multiple birth sort of bad medicine. Process. How many babies would be okay? What would you say? In a single pregnancy? Yeah. Well, our goal as reproductive specialists is to help a patient have one healthy baby. And the reason for that is a single pregnancy is the safest pregnancy. Griffo says most fertility doctors abide by guidelines set by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, which would recommend implanting only one or two embryos in a 33-year-old woman. There isn't a law that says you, doctor, can only transfer this number of embryos. You can't, you can't legislate the practice of medicine. But some ethicists argue rigorous screening is a moral imperative. It's not really, if you will, the old guard uh, telling uh, uh, women what to do with their bodies again. This is different because technology opens up the door to make babies in new ways to put risks and harms for children that didn't exist before. And I think all of us have a stake in trying to make sure that we protect the best interests of children. Although this is an extreme example, Situations like this put potential mothers who undergo the procedure at risk of needing outside aid to take care of their newborn children, whether this aid is federal or from friends and family. Other potential mothers are not nearly as successful as Nadia Solman, and still have little success in procreating despite using in vitro fertilization. An alternative to in vitro fertilization is adoption. The upside to this is that the woman or couple would be able to choose exactly how many children they would be able to financially support. The downside is that these children are not genetically their own. It leads to the question of whether a woman or a couple has a right to have children that are genetically their own. If so, how far can a person ethically go in this pursuit? Some say that in vitro fertilization causes embryos to be used as a commodity rather than treating them as human beings and giving them human rights. Once the embryos are formed, who has the right to their genes, the parents or the embryo? The parents had to contribute their genes in order for the embryo to be created. However, the embryo is now its own separate entity. In vitro fertilization opens up many questions regarding a person's right to procreate and how it should be done. Although this technology is getting more successful, we really must ask ourselves under what conditions we should be using it.